Hello, you guys. Welcome to the DR Show. Today, I'm here with power pop band, The Aces. Power pop. So let's go. <laughs> Never been described as a power pop band. Yes. I like it. I like it. <laughs> what are your names and what instrument do you play? I'm Katie, and I play guitar. I'm Chris, so I'm lead singer. I'm Elisa, I play the drums. Wow. Okay, so I really just want to start from the beginning. Where it all started. I know two of your sisters. Weird These two sisters. right here. So yeah, how did you all meet though? Like, how did this we met. I mean, well, we're sisters, so we're, we're also missing one of us. Yes, yeah. we are we missing one of us. Yeah, yep. Kenna. Um, but uh, we grew up together, obviously, sisters. Um, and just kind of like started playing music at a really young age, from like eight and ten years old. Um, just like with a fascination for like our older brother was in like punk bands and metal bands and. Um, so we started playing music together, me singing, playing guitar, Elisa wanted to play drums because our mom was like, you have to pick an instrument. Yeah. Piano we, like went to church and stuff. Like, piano, we were literally falling asleep playing piano. No hate to, I wish I played piano now. Everyone yeah, says I know, I really they wish that, they I, we in. really regret I'm that. Learning. We're learning. But so she picks drums and we start playing together and then, uh, I have known, we met Ken, like we were in like kindergarten, we like, yeah. grew up together. Um, it was very like small town vibes. Like yeah. Kenna's mom taught me first grade. Like it was very mm -hmm. yeah. small, mm -hmm. small town. <laughs> so yeah, we met Kenna in elementary and we just like played together to like our friends who would listen essentially and mm -hmm. like birthday like, parties, whatever. Like we were so yeah. little. And then we met Katie in middle school. Junior high, yeah. I yeah. met Kenna. We went to the same middle school and I was like 13 and then met these gals. We became really good friends first and was like, hey, like I play guitar too, like come jam sometime. We like started playing and it just Took like off, just match yeah. made in heaven. Since. We played like a school talent show. We've been together ever since. Yeah, yeah. since we're like kids. What about that talent show? Did you guys like play in the band? We, we played... Um, I think we played a Maroon 5 cover. A Maroon 5 cover. Maroon yeah. 5 cover. We played like a deep cut Maroon 5 cover. It was, it was, it was called a rogue choice. Give, give a little, little more. more. Yeah. Give a little more. What kind of like kids were you growing up and how have you guys kind of changed? Like are you guys the same oh my God. people? It's so funny actually because like not even talking about when we were kids because obviously like, we've changed so much so since much. we were little kids. Like you know everyone goes through like phases. Like we went through all of our like tween years, teen years together. So there was like a lot of personal development still a lot of personal development that's happening i mean i'm only 25 so like i'm my brain is just barely clicking into place yeah it was so funny because before we came in here they were displaying like an old music video of ours on the front screen and like it was from our first record so i was like 19 at the time and i was watching it and i was just like who is that girl and why does she look like cardi b <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Cardi B. Shout out, Shout out Cardi B. Shout out Cardi B. Era. I was like Cardi B era. <laughs> obsessed. Like, we've yeah. gone yeah. through a lot, but and honestly, at the end of the day, I, there's so much that we're just the exact same. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some truly, stay like I would yeah. say that, like, I mean, I would say some of us have changed more than others. I feel like yeah. I've been pretty consistent. You are. Think about, your Jesse J think about all Except the I did have a Jesse J face. Think about all the eras. No, I mean, everyone has <laughs> eras, of course. I had a Jesse J era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full French. Full French. I went crazy on yeah. that. Um, I don't know. I guess Katie, like, Katie was so sporty. Yeah. Like, so Party's sporty. Just so, like, didn't, like, I always had a hat on. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If we're talking about fat, I guess we're That's taking it in the fashion simple. route. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah I As think people, though, I think so like our personalities similar. have always yeah. been kind of, our dynamic has always been kind of consistent. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. who's more quiet versus who's more loud versus who's more this, that. That's always, I think, been quite Pretty, the same. Yeah. Have and you guys seen that like thing on Instagram or TikTok where it's like, this is like the dark one. And then this is like the, yeah. like the devil, the angel, and then like the in between. Yeah. 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 We've which done, one's which? We've done oh. some TikTok trends where we've done that, like this, like the one who does this, the one yeah, that does yeah. this. And yeah. I would say, oh, I devil, mean, angel, and devil, in angel. between. I would say, mm -hmm. Ken and Katie are probably the angels. Yeah, I'd say it's giving demonic. Demonic. <laughs> and it's giving in between. <laughs> and it's giving multifaceted. Um, yeah, we always joke like, I feel like we're all really different in our personalities in a way that's very complimentary of each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that's why we've been a band for as long as we have. We've been able to stay together because like we really complement each other in the ways that I think are like ultimately very like not only motivating but really like soothing mm -hmm. during times of like of feeling, you know, less than or, or going through hard stuff, I feel like 
we're kind of like this support group for each yeah. other and we've always been that way mm-hmm. or even like, just like decisions like i just feel yeah. like the way that everyone weighs in like if we're disagreeing on something like between the four of us we can usually come to like a good conclusion that everyone's like okay like that makes sense like, like if I the majority point, of people yeah. feel this way then like i trust you guys and we all like kind of have a really good system that way just because our personality like i feel like if there was like four people that were all very like adamant demonic. about like certain very things. demonic very, yeah. very demonic there, there were four, four demons, demons in the band <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would be terrible it would be a different it would be song. scary um and if there's four angels in the band it'd be boring so yeah true we true. need we need the dichotomy we spice it yes. up for sure i read in this interview actually that you got, someone said that the reason why you guys you know are so close and successful as a band is because you have great communication skills. <laughs> so just for all the people out there and your fans that don't know how to communicate <laughs> with their friends and like their loved ones, I have a problem communicating. Yeah. What are some communication tips? I would say it takes tip. time and mm-hmm. some and like it doesn't just happen. Yeah, I think I it know. really yeah. takes like to be honest, I think the best communication happens when you really can like try to put your ego yeah. away. Yeah. Like that's the thing, like when you can really start to think from a perspective that isn't just like self-serving, yeah. but a perspective mm-hmm. that's maybe like group serving or relationship serving, whatever. Yeah. Like that's been the biggest thing with us. And also being like, I think passive aggression is like yeah. the absolute killer of good communication yeah. because wow. it's yeah. it's not, you know, I, I think it's not very productive. It's not productive. It just creates like weird feelings throughout the group. So like I we are the I least think it's like passive aggressive people yeah, ever. I feel like, like you have to like super direct with each other yeah. and super like from the very beginning when we were like fifteen years old, we just got in the habit of like if we would notice someone was like okay, like, I'm fine with that, but, like, clearly not. We'd be like, you're clearly not, though, so, like, let's you talk about it. About it. We just really kind of, like, attack our issues in a way that I think we've gotten, like, yeah. a lot more graceful and tactful about doing it as we get older, but I think you can be passive-aggressive. Mm-hmm. You if you're being passive-aggressive, like, you've got to stop. I also think yeah. it's, like, really a, have to stop. it's a vulnerability <laughs> thing, too. Like, totally. I feel like a lot of the past, like, when you're being passive-aggressive, it's because there's an unwillingness to, like, actually be vulnerable about, like, what's bothering you. Mm-hmm. And so I Definitely. feel like leading with vulnerability and just, like, remembering, first and foremost, the people you're talking to you really care about. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to, like, approach it with, like, anger or so many things because it's like okay like you care about them they care about you like just be honest about how you're feeling Mm -hmm. and trust that like that will be heard and you guys can work Mm -hmm. it out what does a day in the studio with you guys look like how do you start a song it depends on the kind of like where we are at in the process of making a record because there's like different phases to it like there's the writing phase which is the first phase which typically i mean this record it changed a little bit and and we were a lot more collaborative all four of us but in the past it would be like elise and i just like really go into like a writing zone so we're going into the studio with a producer or or whatever and just really trying to write songs and write like melodies and lyrics and stuff like that and then once we feel like we have the more, songs, the songs that we would kind of take it to like bring, the next yeah. level. We'd kind of go into like the recording phase where everyone would go into like a live studio and we'd all like record the instrumentation live and like finish the production elements. So it mm. usually goes in like those two Little phases. phases. But yeah. we did one song on this record where we switched that up. Uh, it's called Suburban Blues. And we kind of just wanted to like go back to how we wrote music as kids where like we all just went in a live room together. I sat on my drums, they had their guitars, Crystal had her mic. And we just like had our producer hit record and we just started jamming something out like really raw and this song just came out really quick which that doesn't always happen to be honest like you know every day is different sometimes we'll play for like an hour and just like everything was shit today but <laughs> that a lot moment, of days we're like what did we yeah, even write there's that nothing that moment was like whoa it just like immediately came out like katie immediately had that guitar riff like mm-hmm. kenna was immediately playing that bass line i was immediately playing that uh, B and Crystal was just like humming this melody and we were just like okay there's something here and then we kind of took that recording and me and Crystal like went in a room locked ourselves in a room and just like started doing melodies and lyrics for the song and that was really fun to kind of like flip our process on its head that way and, and try something different and we got something that sounded like really akin to like the music we made when we were kids which was really cool mm-hmm. um, so we're always trying to like switch it up like that mm-hmm. and just to try to like bring in new yeah. new sounds let's talk about Pride for a second mm-hmm. um I also read somewhere else someone said like pride saves like like pride saves lives and how did you say it? Someone said mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We we played a ton Being of open about that. Yeah, we played a ton of prides that. last last year, and that was like a, a a big part of like a speech that I would give on stage was like pride really saves lives. You know, mm-hmm. this place for people to come together and feel celebrated mm-hmm. and feel like the things that you know. I know for me, my queerness and my identity was a real source of like pain for me as a teenager because I was so you know like I grew up in like a really homophobic religious town, and I was like how I can't. I'm never going to be able to be out and, and, and what, how am I going to, how am I going to create a life for myself? Like I have this thing about me that I'm like so ashamed of, you know? And so for me to find an artist like Tegan and Sarah that like really saved my life and then be able to be on stages at pride in a safe space for other queer people and be like, this is really life saving. You know, a lot Mm -hmm. of people don't have anywhere to be themselves, anywhere to be out and to be safe and to feel, you know, not just tolerated, but like really celebrated. And that's what I love about Pride so much is that it's not just like a, yeah, it's it's fine that you're gay. It's like, no, it's fucking awesome that you are who you are and that you're like uniquely who you are and um, you get to feel excited about it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to just feel like I made peace with this. It's like, no, you get to like really celebrate it. Yeah, you yeah know? definitely. Yeah. Any advice for like maybe you know, kids that want to come out to, like, their loved ones, Mm -hmm. you know, and and want to feel safe doing that? I think my main piece of advice is, number one, like, there's no rush on coming out, and your coming out can be whatever you want it to be. It can be, like, super vocal and, like, Mm -hmm. online if you want it to be. It can also be, like, just to people that you feel safe telling, and then you can slowly make your way into being more out. Like, I think I felt a lot of pressure when I was in high school to figure out, as everyone does, to figure out who I was and to be really sure of who I was. And I watched, shout out to Rose and Rosie. They're like these amazing um, YouTubers and they're both uh, queer women and they're married. And um, Rose did this whole, it like changed my whole perception on on my identity and my self-discovery. She did this video on her coming out and she said that she came out to herself like two years before she came out to anyone. She got really comfortable with being mm-hmm. gay yeah. and owning that part of her identity before she told anyone. And she was like, it was kind of this like really fun, beautiful time where it's like, this was just my thing mm-hmm. that I got to discover and like talk, have conversations with myself about and get comfortable with and like explore in private. Mm-hmm. And then when I felt ready, I started telling people. And so I think that that like really changed my perception and like made me feel so safe to be like oh like i don't have to rush into anything i get to just discover who i am and when i'm ready i get to tell people so i would just say like my biggest piece of advice is like just do whatever feels natural to you and also make sure you know of course like first and foremost that you're safe before you come out and and that you um have the resources you need to to be safe before Mm -hmm. you come out and just take your time because there's no rush to figure out who you are and it's ever changing all the time. I loved you for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, can you tell me how you guys started that song? I love that song. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that song started, that song kind of had like an amazing evolution. Um, I had started it by myself, just like at my house on my computer and the demo originally sounded like super different than how it sounds on the record it now. literally sounded like the weekend yeah it sounded like the weekend it was like it had like it a was horn sick. section it was like a very like it almost sounded like ballady like it was really different but the it, it was like 24k by bruno meets the weekend it was like <laughs> no it wasn't I 24k felt... it was like it was really it was like ballady it was very ba- but it was, it was like 80s it was like 70s 80s ballad like it was, it was, re- giving, it was like, like 80s disco it was really cool but it was, it was so ballady. different but it, it was the same melodies it was like that i've loved you for so long but i had forgotten how it feels like it was like all of that melody and and lyrics were there and I showed it to Kristen and was like, I have this idea that I really, really like, but like, obviously this sounds nothing like our band. So like, and she listened to it and she was like, oh, I love this. Why don't we do this? And she just like picked up an acoustic guitar and like started like rearranging the chords a bit and like singing the song over that. And I was like, that's fucking amazing. Like we have to run with this. And so we took it to our collaborator, Keith Barron, who we did the whole record with. And we kind of just built this like beautiful kind of nostalgic like cranberries meets cure kind of like sounding Mm -hmm. um, like early 90s, like beautiful little like Mm -hmm. timeless track. It was really simple too. It It was just built around that acoustic guitar. I just heard these like chords in my head. I was like, I love that melody, but I hear this like in a totally different kind of like genre and vibe and something that's like 
more more like aligning with the kind of record we were making yeah um and so we really just built it around those like four yeah. chords you hear on that acoustic guitar in the record and we wanted to keep it like the production yeah. on that song was so simple it literally happened in like a day the demo is pretty much exactly what got yeah. released what's your guys' favorite era of music oh so and hard least again. favorite like so, 60s 70s ooh, least, least favorite <laughs> I would say I mean, it's, it's, it's like a span too. of 10 years. It's so hard to pick. Like, there's always going to be good stuff that comes out, like, in a decade. But I feel like for me, my two, I don't know. I feel like 80s is always, like, such a staple for me. But also, like, early 90s yeah. and 60s is huge for me, too. Mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of, like, don't care as much about the 70s. But it's, I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to pick. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's anything that I, like, deeply dislike as far as like that it comes to the top of my head but i think that yeah like early 90s for me late 80s like that new mm -hmm. wave era of music yeah. that was going into the 90s um is probably one of my absolute yeah. favorite Always types of music mm -hmm. it's also just, like yeah. largely influences our sound yeah huge like era. we were listening to a lot of like the cure and cocktail twins and smiths. like the smiths and just like a lot of really amazing like new wave shoegaze bands mm -hmm. um when we made this record and feeling really inspired by like the emotion that's pulled from that type of music it just feels like a soundtrack to like your favorite mm -hmm. rom-com or like your favorite movie or whatever and so we wanted this music to feel really cinematic also, one thing that I noticed about you guys, I mean, you're an all-girl band. That's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really stand for it and, like, are vocal about, like, women um, empowerment mm -hmm. and women feeling represented. Mm -hmm. So how important is that to you to have that be, like, an ongoing message? Yeah, it's I think really that's important. huge for us. You know, I think that when we started our band, we were so young that it wasn't even, like, totally a conscious effort to be all female it just ended up that way mm -hmm. and I feel like as we've gotten older you know like we've realized like how rare it is and how unique it is and it's been something that's been two things for us it's been something that has been really great for us and also something that's kind of been a challenge because we live in a very male dominated world and a very misogynist world and a patriarchal world so like there's been a lot of moments in our career especially as we got older uh that we faced a lot of like backlash and like you know a lot of energy from like other men and in, in the business and other bands just like not really being that inviting to us and like kind of this intrinsic problem within like society you know we were just kind of like well it's like such a disappointment to ever see something so just like pure and fun like this be like held against us is so sad and weird but it's therefore becomes so important to us to stand up for it and mm -hmm. to not back away and to not shy away and to show up on as many stages as we can and to be proud about it and you know I think it's mm -hmm. I think as we get older too it's just like one of those things that's like you know, our art, it's really important to us to, like, display our core values within our art and you, mm -hmm. and be really vocal about the things we care about. And um, we just want to go on to inspire more generations of young women that want to play instruments, that want to make alternative music, that um, want to do things that women aren't often encouraged to do. You know, we look at people like Teen and Sarah and The Runaways and Joan Jett and people like that that paved the way for us. And so we're grateful to them and we hope to just be something along those lines like an extension of that movement mm -hmm. of women yeah. queer women just people that are you know not encouraged to take up space to take yeah. up more space because um it's important you know yep. so we are very like we brought on our last tour we only had women open for us on our tour and we were really adamant about doing that and we had a lot of people even be like whoa like on, like only a lineup of women like it was some it's crazy like, thing yeah, and I was like, were like people were genuinely like shit yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's what? Just, it's, yeah exactly yeah. Like, how many tours did you see that's only men it's almost yeah. funny that it's like this point of conversation even because it's just like wait what like yeah like we brought out the beaches and they're fucking amazing and like it was just this like real point and even to us you know we just want to keep doing this so it's just like normal yeah. it's just normal yeah. it's normalized like yeah. that women can play instruments and be bands and it's just like part of every day and and with a you fan know. base that is predominantly young women and queer you know like we just really want them to see representation on stage mm -hmm. so that they feel empowered to do whatever they want to do well it was lovely having you guys yeah, thanks thanks for having us. Us. So what are your plans for the, the summer when mm -hmm. are we touring 
We are touring in the All fall, August. and we're doing a bunch of European festivals this mm-hmm. summer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're doing like we're about to go international and yeah. be in London to do a release we're show. Gonna, we're gonna start touring the U.S. I think like beginning of September. Tickets mm-hmm. are on sale now. Yeah, it's go yes. get your tickets. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be September and October. Party. Really yeah. fun. So it's gonna be a really busy year mm-hmm. for yeah. for the Aces. Lots of shows. We're excited. Amazing. Go catch a show and see you guys next time. See you later. Bye.